Bibles the whole time. The whole time. Bibles <laughs> through and through. And Every day. I, <laughs> I still read the questions, All even the time. though I'm done. Yeah. Just because. Just because. Yeah, it is. What is the dynamic? What has your, your experience been with residents? I have a really hard time with this question that gets asked to me a lot because in general, I haven't had too many problems. Like every once in a while, like egos will confront each other. But as long as you can maintain yourself and just treat people like, you know, respectable human beings, you don't run into the problem as much as you would think that you would. So, you know, I get asked that question a lot. Do you feel respected by physicians and, um, you know, valued? And in general, yes. So I, I think, you know, and sometimes I think to myself, should I have gone to medical school? Would I garner more respect just with that title of MD or DO or whatever? But then I think like, okay, so I would have gone to medical school, like, and I see female physicians talking about how they don't feel as respected as male physicians. So I really think that it's it's in every single po like profession, and um, I don't think that I take the brute of it more than anyone else does. So I haven't run into a ton of problems with it. Yeah, no, I agree. I I, I would second that. I think it's a it's not a question of. Uh you know, the dynamic between an MD and a P and an MP, it's a question of um, just how you conduct yourself as a human being. So, you know, there, there's issues amongst co-residents, there's issues amongst MDs and MDs and NPs and NPs and RNs and NPs and so on. And so if you kind of go into it saying, you know, I'm an MD, therefore I'm the top of the hill and you have to listen to me and you don't know what you're doing, then no one's going to like you or respect you. Um, and it's just not true. So it's all about how you approach that. And so I, I haven't had too many issues because I like to approach everyone as if they're my equal. Um, I have seen instances where people have kind of gotten into it. Um, and I think it's largely because of what you said, these egos clashing and this idea that they have an MD and therefore they like outweigh the other person. Yeah. Everyone just wants to be validated, honestly. Like they want their talents, their time, education, their titles validated. And I feel like if you can do that for the other person, in general, interactions end up just being okay. In general. It's true in medicine in, in particular. Yeah. It's funny, it's, what you said is very, I, it resonated with me because in medicine, I think everyone is scared of being found out as the fraud. Mm -hmm. Everyone want, doesn't want to look dumb. And so if someone questions you in an academic way, in a polite way, in a way that's just for the patient's benefit, it's hard to not take that as a slight at your academic intellect. Truth. And so everyone is always on their on edge about being kind of pushed or questioned, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, nurse practitioners can't do surgery, so like I oh. You know, yeah. so like there are certain things we can't do, like there are certain procedures that we're not going to do, you know, even GI, we're not going to like go scope someone. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I've only experienced what I've experienced, which has been in the ICU and I think MPs do a really good job. So what do you think? I, I think um, a lot of medicine, like you can, you can go to med school, you can go to NP school, you can go to all the school you want, but at the end of the day, you're reading from a book and kind of seeing things from the outside. So I think experience counts for more. So I think NPs who've had more experience than some of the MDs are probably better at certain things um, and vice versa. So I think it's a matter of experience and, and um, it doesn't really matter how, what you got on your step score or what book you've memorized. It's mm -hmm. what you've experienced and done with your own hands, I think. That's such a weird question. No, I mean, not, no, I don't. You know what? There are some attendings that get bored very, very easily and they want to take the sicker patients. It's not, it's not a dig to our talents or what we know. It's that they just have ADD and like need some things to do and want to do procedures and whatever. And they ask to take them and we'll say, yeah, like, sure, we don't care, you know, um, but we don't. The NPs where I work, Bill, we do everything just the same as the physicians, and I would venture to say we bill a very similar amount of money, um, minus the extra procedures. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I guess sometimes, but not because it's like a dig to the NPs. Yeah, I, again, I can only speak to my experience, and my experience has been um, in the ICU when we've had the parallel MP team, and there would be an admission 
they would dole the admission out um, because we would be considered the resident team would be like the educational team. And so they want us to get mm. the more complex, more interesting oh, patients. And yeah, for sure. So in when those settings, I do there. think we do get some of the more interesting patients. And it's not, it's not, that's a different thing than saying that you get the easier patients because mm -hmm. it's not easier. The patients are patients. Uh, but the more complex, the more rare diseases, that kind of stuff, they try and give, or at least in my institution, they were trying to give it to the residents because we're in they our do. training. They definitely do. And once again, like we're there all the time. So it doesn't really matter. At some point, we will have to, by default, take very, very sick patients. But if the residents are there on a particular day and they need learning experiences, we're happy to like let them have them, you know? And when I'm on a 24-hour call and I have to admit someone overnight, I would love to get the easier patients. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> gosh, me, honestly, some days, me too. Just oh, yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you have to do. Uh, we have to do like a certain amount of CMEs, varies by state. Mm -hmm. Once again, as a nurse practitioner, you have to do like 50 or 60 total, I think. Um, and we don't have to retest. Mm. So they have to retest. Yes, we do. We every, don't 10 retest. Years, every 10 years, we have to recertify. So just to quickly run through the testing misery that is um, miserable. So you have the MCAT, you get into med school. You have step one in the middle of med school, which dictates kind of the residency caliber you can get into. Then you have step two CS, step two CK. You have um, step three that you take in your, usually in the end of your intern year, which gives you your license. So once you have your license, then you can, you can get your medical license, but then you still have to finish residency. And depending on the residency you do, which in my case is internal medicine, then you take your board exam. So you can then are board certified and licensed. And then every 10 years subsequent to that, you then need to retake that board exam.